let's talk about the positives of bubbles. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany Simon. Oh, I've missed you the last week. Not doing last week's podcast and the live shows made me really sad, but I'm here today and I'm very excited to jump into it. Before we do, I am drinking a tea today. I just finished it. It's the queen tea. You guys know I've had this in the past. This is from Witch Wood Tea House from Etsy. Love, love, love. Not sponsored, just love. I'm drinking it out of my Uncle Iroh teapot. Hey, yo, so cute. Recommended by one of you to grab it from Hot Topic, which I did. Oh, yeah, baby. So this one is strawberry, mint, mugwort, black cohosh, cohosh, dandelion, apple, nettle, and chamomile. Super delish. It's very strong on the chamomile. So if that's not your flavor, avoid. But for me, love, love, love. No complaints here. So as many of you guys know, I co-authored a sort of philosophy observational system, a tool, if you will, to observe people and where they are, especially the self in relation to introspection. It's really a tool for the self, but of course, as is natural, we'll wanna compare and contrast between other people's stories as well. So I use a lot of anime characters or fictional characters, as well as like YouTubers and personalities we see online as ways to gauge how we can judge someone's introspective level. Now, disclaimer, obviously I don't know the people that I observe most of the time, and even after I talk to them, truly like to understand where a person's from, they would have to feel safe enough to have that conversation with you. So I wanna talk today about why we love bubbles, why bubbles are positive. Bubbles are ideologies, concept, belief systems that people adhere to, are born or raised in, that people think are like objectively true or universally true. There are ideas and concepts that on the greater scale, you know, is just the way humans are and doesn't seem that negatively impactful, but on the micro can really impact people on their day-to-day -day lives. So obviously macro versus micro, we want to think about who we are in relation to the universe itself and then who we are as a species interacting with one another. Bubbles can also exist in the individual. So I always like to say that I'm a five on my introspective scale, but I still live in a bubble because I think we all live in bubbles and bubbles can be as small as our own consciousness and the relationship we have with it to a relationship I might have during my one-on-one -on -one calls. Maybe I'm talking to someone and I say, hey, in this moment of time, it's just us in this bubble and nothing matters. It's a really nice safe space that I can create because I'm not going to call anybody. I'm not going to report them. I'm not going to cancel them. My job as a person who has professional conversations for a living, like I converse with people for a living. My goal with my work is to problem solve and to help people problem solve because I love cracking codes. And I like the idea of someone presenting me with a problem that I can be like, aha. And together in a, in a really collaborative way, we figure out what to do to be better, happier, more joyous people. So think about bubbles like this. Think about uh, two bubbles. Two bubbles are people that are most people, people born into a bubble, stay in the bubble, think the bubble is objective. They are people who can cross different bubbles. Let's say you grew up conservative like I did. And then you have a re, you know, an interaction with the conservative community where you realize like, oh, it's kind of like double-edged sword. Like it's kind of like sneaky deaky. It's kind of like behind the scenes, people are being hypocrites. In public, they're saying one thing while doing different things in private. It's like, oh, okay, this isn't exactly what I thought it was. This beacon of justice, this belief system of traditionalism and conservatism that's supposed to keep the West, you know, in check. It's just a, a belief system that people adhere to on a spectrum. So you meet like Republicans who say they're not conservatives or conservatives who say they're not Republicans. And let's say, like I did, you came out of that bubble by becoming a Democrat or in my case, a registered independent. And that was like, whoa. And all your friends and family were like, wow, that's crazy. Like you, you changed as a person. And yet I'm still stuck in a bubble that politically speaking is one person against the other and therefore the same sort of bubble. And yet not the same bubble because if, again, you can be a conservative in a Democrat bubble, but then be a Democrat in a Republican bubble and it's all kind of one bubble. But within those bubbles, there's even bubbles. Stay with me here. So there is good and bad in these bubbles. There's a lot of good. Community, consistency, structure, the three things science says we need to be happy and joyous people. It's why religious people are happier than atheistic people, but atheistic people have the struggle of figuring out what it means to have morals, figuring out what it means to even be an ethical person. I hear all the time from people, Brittany, you're not, you know, you know, you're not ethical. You don't have values. You don't even have, you know, how could you have values without religion? I understand your question. It's a good one. And I think ultimately, because I do not believe in a religion, a God, a belief system that explains the creation of the universe, because I don't have that objective answer, it's much harder for me. So I have to do much more work, which led me down a path of introspection because I had to have those answers. They weren't just given to me. So I understand. But I also want to point out that 
there's such beauty in two bubbles. There's such beauty in religion. There's such beauty. There's art. There's community. There's just something really lovely about people coming together who are the same. And as much as it, you know, creates conflict and chaos in the universe, it also comes from a place of free will, in my opinion, where people and free will being a spectrum concept, like, you know, depending on how you interact with it, most people, you know what I mean, do engage in free will to an extent and choose to have lives um, that are predicated on a belief system, primarily religious or cultural, right? So there's something beautiful here. I look at America and I think about like black culture and how beautiful like black communities, you know, are together. Their music, their clothing, the way they express themselves when they're together. It's just like there's laughter and beauty there. And it doesn't matter that each and every one of our communities have strife, like that's just being human. I'm trying to focus on the beauty, right? Because the strife will come later. The chaos and the turmoil is always in our experience as human beings, regardless of our background, because that's just what it means to be a person, right? But there is beauty. I look at even like um, the Chaldean communities, my people. I look at us gathering together and I think how beautiful. I just went home to see my parents and my mom had Tershi and all these beautiful like Kubeba and all these Ahmed Kubi and like all these meals and stuff that just made me go, I want to go home and cook this. And I am one of the few siblings that regularly cooks Middle Eastern food. I love it so much. It's so good. It is peak, the best food ever created, which is not objective. It's subjective because it's what I grew up with, but it is my favorite. Like all time, if I had to eat anything for the rest of my life, obviously my people's food because it is the best. The nostalgia is there. The taste is there. The community feeling is there. But what does it mean to, to be a two that sort of is unorthodox, maybe doesn't get along with other people? What if you're a two who sort of is a conspiracy theorist? What if you're a flat earther who has a really strong belief that the earth is flat? And so you become beholden to that belief. Are you less happy than like a Catholic or a Christian or a Muslim? Well, probably not, or maybe so. It depends. In my level system, I observe people in three categories in relation to the twos, two Cs, two Bs, and two As. And primarily two Cs are people who are definitely more susceptible because they have the least amount of introspection to scams and you know you know just like ads and they're the people who just they have a tendency to not quite figure out the rat race as consistently as like a 2b or 2a mostly because they they don't quite have the strongest form of introspection but they're not as bad as ones and bad is said uh with an understanding that I'm not trying to good or bad people but ones are people who really are useless to themselves and their communities. People who just can't seem to get out of their own way and therefore out of the weight of their communities. And so they tend to be a huge burden. And these are people who have every reason to be successful, have money, access, support, or slash enough cognizant ability, enough interest, like enough ability to be introspective enough to point out their problems, but not int- enough introspection to do anything about it. These are not people with like severe mental disabilities who literally can't function because of them. I'm not talking about that. Those would be twos. People who struggle from mental illness, disability, uh, babies, people who are doing the best within their tools are just twos. People who have the tools and choose not to do better, that's a one just to specify. And yet the one sort of like leeches off the world of the twos while resenting anyone who's maybe a three, four, five. A two is cynical of the three, four, fives. They're not really resentful or, or, or cruel about it, traditionally speaking. They're actually open, but but hesitant. You ever see those Jubilee talks, uh, the middle talks, you know, where it's like, let's uh, middle ground, I think it's called, where people will discuss back and forth with one another. And it'd be like conservative dad and like liberal teen or like this and this. Those people genuinely have passion and desire and ideologies and beliefs and desires to be good people. And then they clash. It's not like they're bad people and then they clash. They're good people and then they clash. And so my encouragement for my channel is to try to get everyone to understand that I do believe a majority of the world is good because I see you. I watch you on the news. I see what you're trying to do and I get where everyone is coming from. And I wish people could be a little bit more efficient with the way that they cohabitated so we could mitigate or minimize the amount of violence that occurs. Look at Ukraine and Russia right now. Everyone I hear from has a different version of the story, but all I know ultimately is that poor people and people who are struggling and innocent people are being impacted by this war. Regardless of how you feel about Russia as a government entity, Russian people are suffering. And so it's very difficult for me to sit there and be like, pro-USA, pro-Ukraine, when I know that Russia's government and and United States government both hold levels of corruption that I think 
can't be dismissed in relation to who I should be all of a sudden on the side of. And yet, and yet I do live in America. I am red, white, and blue, baby. And so at the end of the day, if it comes to it, obviously I'll defend my home and this happens to be my home, but I'm not going to be happy or joyful that in order to protect my home, I'm put in a situation where I know civilians are going to have to be hurt. So my issue is that when we're discussing this and we're trying to be observant, we have to first acknowledge and be okay with the fact that we live in bubbles. And that makes it all better because everyone knows they live in bubbles. I see it on Twitter when people are conversing. I see it on... Andrew Schultz just said it the other day. We live in a podcast bubble. Um, Kim Possible, I can't, Christy Romano, whatever her name is, she says, I lived in the Hollywood bubble. The Catholics will say, oh, a Muslim bubble or look, a gay bubble. Everybody knows we live in bubbles. And yet nobody wants to do the next step. Okay, guys, problem solved with me. If we all live in bubbles and we all have falsehoods in our beliefs, thought maybe we're all wrong. Maybe we need to re-examine why we are in bubbles. Now, I don't think bubbles will ever go away, and I don't think they should necessarily. I think if I believe, and I do, that humans are an evolved animal species over time, that we're doing our best with our consciousness and our ability to access that free will and our ability to you know, act upon that free will, then we're going to make mistakes and we're going to come to different conclusions at different times. You know what I mean? If you're born into a religious bubble, right, then it might take you some time to leave that bubble and go explore. If, you bore, if you're born into a secular bubble, it might take you time to leave that bubble and explore. But you have to explore to leave the bubbles. And you can't just leave one or two or five. I'm talking about leaving all a billion bubbles. Like leave all the bubbles and that's what fiveness is. But you don't have to get to five to be joyful. Because remember, the twos give us music, culture, consistency, structure, community. They give us a lot of beauty in the world. Because the truth is, if unless you know exactly what humans are doing here, we don't know. And if we don't know, it seems a little strange that we would create ideas and belief systems predicated on how we're going to control other people on an I don't know. When I watched Stephen uh, Destiny debate that Muslim guy, it really stayed with me. I've mentioned it a bunch of times, but I can't help but use it as a perfect example of a man who's educated, this Muslim man, educated, well-read, knows liberal um, philosophy, knows the West's philosophy, and yet sit there, sits there and advocates for Islam being the savior of the world, saying that liberal people, gay people, LGBT people will be safest and happiest in a Muslim world, while then admitting to Stephen on stage that yes, in his world, if we're if we catch you being gay or LGBT, we'll kill you. Like very calmly explaining, like, of course we'll kill you. Let me tell you this right now. This is a two problem. In two bubbles, we have one person who believes they have the objective truth for everyone and then the opposing people. And so they all sit there and they meet and then they clash versus like in a three or no, in a four, five world, like fours and fives on my introspective scale. If you're a five, you would very, like the, the reason to kill someone would only ever be in defense. It would never, ever be outside of that. And even then, you try to literally avoid it at all costs because it's so inefficient to kill people. It's really not good for you psychologically. It's not good for you legally. It's not good for you. There are a lot of disadvantages to killing people. So it's not very efficient or, or reasonable. But in two world, it's very normal to be like, I'll just kill him. I'll just kill him. I'll just kill him. Yes, yes, yes. We'd all kill anybody in the right circumstance. But that's not the point. The point is, why do you want to kill people? Like, why does this Muslim guy sit there and be like, yes, of course, we'll kill you? Like, what part of him exists? What part inside of him exists that makes him want to do these things, right? And at the same time, I'm not even mad at people for being Muslim or anti-gay. Like, I'm not mad at you because you have a belief that makes you feel like you definitely know the answers to the universe. I'm happy for you that you feel that confident. But no offense, you are not the arbiter of truth. You are not the 100%. You're not a god, so you don't get to control people. You're a man. Jordan Peterson had a similar conversation with a man who is Muslim as well. And he goes, Jordan Peterson, one day you'll be a Muslim. I can tell. My mother, who's a Catholic, goes, one day, Jordan Peterson, he'll be Catholic. It's like you all are rooting to collect people like Pokemon into your subcategories, into your two worlds, which is fine, right? Like you really feel like you have the answer. It would be really good for you brand wise to have something as popular as Jordan Peterson on your side. And again, on your side. And you'll say, oh, on the side of truth, girl, your truth is not objective. Do not play with me, right? 
So that's the dilemma is that you are living a subjective reality, bubbles, and you think because you're in your bubble, you have the right to control people. Here's my thing. I know my life is mostly subjective. I know like Socrates that I know nothing. And so if I know nothing and I believe most things and I'm trying real hard to acknowledge what I do and do not know, then I have to come to the conclusion that I have the least amount of right to control other people, the least amount of right to tell people how to live their lives. Now, if people come to me and ask me advice, then I'll give them advice usually based off their own cultural bubble. My parents ask me this all the time. They go, Betsy, do you ever have religious people come ask you for advice and then you convince them not to be religious? And I was like, why would I convince them not to be religious? religious and they go because you used to be a militant atheist I was like yeah when I was a two in a two bubble I used to think my job was to save the religious people and now I'm just sitting here like nah bros your job is to save yourselves I'm chilling I'm not gonna stop you you need to live out your life but you cannot through the lens of your beliefs come into other people's bubbles and demand that you have a right to kill them now because you don't agree with the way they're living that's not the way we're gonna play this game but it is the way we play this game so That kind of doesn't make sense. That's not the way I want to play this game. But I understand why other people want to play it. I understand why there's billions of people on this planet who feel very confident in their right and justification in slaughtering and murdering people, raping people, stealing money from people. I understand why your brain is saying, I have the right to do this. I... I had to learn over time not to take it personal and I had to over time learn that this is what it means to not know why we're here and to to question why I am even a person. You guys know I separate the existing from the existence. I, Brittany, love to exist. Me, I love my life. I like my bubble and my friends and I like my people because no one out here trying to kill anybody. You know what I'm saying? I like my environment. But the moment I have to like enter, like enter, what's this word? The moment I have to socialize with another bubble outside of my bubble and we create conflict, it becomes exhausting to me. And it's not that I want to, you know, tuck my head away in the sand and hide away. No, no, no. I want to radically accept that human beings will create conflict when faced with someone they're opposed to because they don't like the idea of not knowing. Humans are so uncomfortable with not knowing. And I don't blame you. Honestly, it feels good to know. I used to feel like I knew everything. I used to feel so fucking confident. I used to just like in my blood know. And now all I know is that I know very little and it is even a thousand times more comforting than ever believing that I knew. Because when I thought I knew, I was still angry, suicidal. I was I was so pissed. Guys, I had such anger issues. I would like hit walls and kick my car and hurt my body. And now I've been chilling for like two plus years, bros. Like my anger has been minimized. Like, l- listen, I get frustrated. I get annoyed. I said this to somebody earlier in the comment section because they said for someone who doesn't care what people do, you get pretty angry. And I said, no, 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 listen. First of all, Middle Eastern people sound angry, but like we're not even angry half the time. It, that's just the stereotype. But the truth is, is that I do talk with passion and I am annoyed and frustrated. But when I say I don't care, what Brittany means is I don't care enough to control you. When the left comes to me and goes, Brittany, I just want to know you care. Say you care. And I'm like, how would you know that I care about your cause? And they're like, say it. Say you care. Say you want to see Trump in jail. Say something. I'm like, no, because if your version of caring is controlling other people, then I don't care. Brittany When I say I care, it means I do want to help you change your decisions. So I have a habit of not caring about anyone outside my inner circle. And even then, when I see someone in my inner circle making a mistake, I go, you know what? I care, but I don't care enough to intervene in your life because it sounds like this is what you really want to do. So I'm going to respect that and let you do it, even though I think it's going to end horribly. And even when it does end horribly as it does, I just have to sit there and go, that's okay. It's no big deal. You had to go on this journey instead of saying, aha, I knew it and look at you and I knew. It. No, you know what? I get it. You had to go on this journey. I respect this. Look, past Brittany has done so many things I'm not happy with like so many things I'm not happy with and I don't even respect most of her choices because I look at her and I'm like girl what were you doing she was doing the best she thought she could she was using the tools she had at her disposal and she made decisions and now that I have better tools and will always gain better tools as I age I can't help but feel a desire to explain to you guys listen to me when I say this I don't mind if that's a better word for you versus care, I don't mind that you feel very safe in your bubble. I don't mind that you want your version of the world to be everyone's version of the world. I think that's reasonable coming from a, like a understanding of the human psyche. Like I feel like that makes sense, but I'm just telling you it's not morally right. It is borderline dangerous. And that's again, fine if you want to perpetuate a, a culture of chaos because that's what freedom is. 
but you are participating in it. So I don't know if you know that. Like, I don't know. Like, I read this comment about the Ukraine-Russian war on Twitter, and this girl literally tells this guy, uh, no, 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 sorry, it was about, it was about um, black people? What was it about? It was about something, like, black people or Russia. One of those two things. I think it was about lynching. Oh, it's about lynching. Okay, so I was watching this, uh, reading this tweet about lynching. And how the U.S. government made it a hate crime, which, again, all of this stuff is so silly to me. I'm like, just make murder a fucking crime. I don't know why you have to, like, make it a hate crime and put them in jail for longer. The same people who are anti-prison are the same people advocating for people to be in jail for the rest of their lives. And I'm sick of it. The same people who want smaller government are the same people, like, always, you know, paying for government to expand. I get it. You're all the same, but you don't see it. It's fine. But I saw this tweet and the girl goes, you're living in a bubble to this guy. And I'm like, girl, you're living in a bubble. We are all living in a bubble. So I, in order to keep myself sort of grounded, I have to challenge my bubble by having conversations with people on the internet, reminding myself that I don't always see the world objectively because I can't. I'm a subjective human being with feelings and flaws and traumas and biases, so I can't. So I have to double check myself constantly, which ends up creating a less violent, less angry Britney. Because I realized like, oh, girl, I might not know this. Hold on. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. You know, and while I'm busy thinking, I'm not busy stabbing. Do you get what I'm saying? But if you're too busy stabbing and not too busy thinking, no wonder you're going around just stabbing people because you're hurt or in pain. I used to do this all the time. And yet I see the beauty in bubbles. Like even though there's conflict and silliness and people are literally the same, just arguing with each other, like pro-lifers and pro-choicers, when you guys all get together to protest each other, and believe me, I was on both sides. I used to protest for pro-lifers. And then when I became a feminist, I protested for pro-choicers. And like that's the irony is I've been on both sides. And I'm telling you, they're both wrong. You're both so wrong. And you're so wrong because you are so blinded and you're not open. You are not willing to to in any way concede your points. You're not willing to work together and you're not willing to get along. That's fine. But you cannot complain about the world being in constant chaos when you are the, the people leading the chaos. Right? You are the people saying don't get along with people. Don't work together. They are the enemy. They are the other side. That's fine. If But you cannot, you know what I mean? Don't complain to me, Habibi. Don't beg me to join your causes when your causes are separation, segregation, discrimination, alienation. Like I'm over it. I'm over it. I don't want it. I don't want to kill my neighbor. I don't want to go to a war. I don't want to hurt people. I don't want to kill people. Okay, I'm not even a pacifist though, bitch. You come at me, I'll stab you. But like, that's the thing. Don't put me in a position where you're coming for me. Why? Why with your one limited er time on earth would you do this, right? Unless you really think you have the answer, which is fine, but kind of fucking crazy and very narcissistic. So that's the issue too. It's like we're all like living these great big egos of like, I can destroy. I have the right to kill someone and destroy someone and put them in jail forever because I believe I have the right. It's just insane, bro. It's insane. But it's also how humans manage. In some crazy, beautiful, poetic art piece of a way, Human beings as a species, looking at them from like a macro perspective, kind of did amazing things. Even through all the wars and discriminations and rapes and pillaging and all these things, there's something really beautiful and modern about the world in a way that I think is like so impressive, even though it's been crazy. It's so impressive to me. So there is beauty in the bubbles. The bubbles, because of their chaos and suffering, create a force for moving forward and for change. So I'm not even upset when people protest. I don't like the way people protest in America. It's very blow up cars, you know, blow up buildings. It's very exaggerated and just very silly. But at the same time, I understand where their feelings are coming from. I understand why they feel trapped. I understand why they feel like this is the only way to do it. I also know they're trying to make a stand. They're trying to get the world to notice them. I understand all of this. But in the end, we are all responsible and contribute to the way the world is. And so Brittany, for most of her life, was contributing in the same way most people contribute. By alienation, by trying to be a bridge, but secretly thinking like people are crazy. Wanting to convert people, you know, out of religion is the same thing as wanting to convert them into religion. It's all the same. I now, with the skill set that I have and the tools that I have and the knowledge I have, prefer to allow people to be free and live their lives. And... I hope to encourage a sort of avoidance of the conflicts, though I know they're natural and will come up. Look, my own mother and I, my own father and I, we get into debates all the time about politics. We ourselves have a little chaos in our own families. So when we talk about this utopia, this like not ever going to happen world, this very not plausible concept of peace in the world, we have to remember that like if we can't create peace in our own families, how are we going to do it worldwide, right? 
and look, we live in America. It's super polarized. Not everyone does, but me, I can't speak for other countries. So speaking for America, we're polarized. We are constantly fighting, constantly blaming, constantly, constantly everyone else is at fault but us. And I just wish people would take a second to look inward. And at the same time, I don't mind that you don't. Because for the most part, we're, we are getting better and we're going to evolve past this. Like, I think this is just a moment in time as any moment of time is. And I think we have a habit of repeating history, but it's not as bad as it was before. And so I'll take it as a win. Somebody wrote on one of my videos, bro, you crazy, by the way. Your ideas are crazy. Love that for you. Sliving. Um, he said, like, black people have it worse in America now than right after the Civil War. Okay. You can believe that. Like, absolutely. It depends on how you're measuring that success. I measure my success because my mother had no electricity and I had electricity growing up, right? Like, my mother had arranged marriages. I didn't have arranged marriages. Like, there, that, that's how my brain does it, you know? Um, I just go, okay, well, women weren't working 50 years ago in the same way they are working now. I have a full-time job on the internet. I work full-time. I make a living. I'm a single woman. I'm about to buy a house. I'm probably going to adopt a child on my own. Like, I see my life as completely better than the choices my the women in my family used to have just my mother's generation ago. So I see that as a win. But this man is coming to me and writing a comment about how black people after the Civil War, even though some of them were still technically slaves in states that did not tell them they were liberated – right? Like those people had it harder. Sorry, easier, easier. Ugh, my brain switched the words around. Future Brittany here. Sorry for my mistake. Than the modern day black man and black woman today. Is that really the hill you want to die on? And if it is, that's fine. Do you understand why I wouldn't want to engage in that sort of like conversation with you? Because it's obviously insane. And I think the same person said something like Asian people um, stop Asian hate was a campaign that only happened because something like Asians were sucking up to their white saviors and Asians just hate black people. So like this person obviously has a lot of bias. And so as I'm reading these comments, I'm like, okay, these are real people. I'm trying to be considerate and open to their opinions. I'm trying not to just write them off as crazy people. But at the same time, to some extent, I as an individual just can't keep interacting with these sort of like tedious conversations when it's so obvious you just live in a bubble. Right? Like, you really think all of Asian people, like, all of Asia just, like, fucking hates black people? Do you really think, like, Asian Americans, like, they, don't you understand that even modern politics in America pitted Asian and black communities against each other, so you would hate each other? But, like, some of, most, like, you get what I'm saying? Like, every immigrant group does have bias. Like, my family does, too. They have huge colorism issues. But, like, why, why do you think that is? Like, do you think it's just simply Asian people hate black people? Do you think it's simply that, like, people just hate black people? Like, do you think it's that simple or do you think there's like a bazillion layers to this? And by the way, where's the accountability for black communities? Where's the accountability for Asian communities or Chaldean communities? It only can exist in our communities because how could anyone else ever hold us accountable? And if our own communities aren't holding us accountable, well, of course, there's continued chaos. Again, these are all race bubbles. These are all like religious bubbles. There's so much going on here. So and again, in two world, all of this feels very self-righteous. But in five world, it feels really exhausting to me and petty because it just like this is this is a real human thing happening and people are feeling real emotions. But are we adults enough to say, yeah, I'm not going to fight you and we're going to stop this? No, because adulthood is high school with money because it takes patience and a real humbling to to literally just like remove yourself from other people's choices. Who cares if people are fat lesbians who identify as non-binary whatever's? Like, who cares? I don't care. I don't care if you're religious. I don't care if you're this. I'm not going to stop you. Okay? I might disagree or agree whether it's, like, based in reality, but let's be real. How many two bubbles out here super based in reality? From choosing your gender, which is fine. I'm all about it. To choosing your God, I'm all about it. Like, how much of this is even rooted in what's real? And does it even matter? I try to think of all the good things two bubbles gave us. And obviously, it comes from conflict, right? By people standing up for themselves and believing in themselves they can liberate themselves and they can have great moments of connection with other people people come together to make movies to make amusement parks to celebrate you know culture football sports uh, theater arts in general like we come together to create beautiful things I was thinking about um 
Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds and their feud because I was telling my mom about how he has a coffee um, company and 100% of the proceeds go back to the farmers. So Hugh Jackman in a position of power instead of taking the money and making money off of his coffee company actually gives the money back to the farmers or the people who are creating the coffee. He's just using his name to promote the company. That's really nice. I like that. I'm not saying it's wrong if he had created a, 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 a coffee company and taking the proceeds. That's not even wrong either. But it's like uh, from my perspective, because that's something I value. I'm like, oh, I like that this already obviously wealthy person, much like Viggo Mortensen, who opened up a publishing house for small small authors. They don't need the money. They are using their money to to do the thing that was their dream before. That's how I view my future self, if she ever is wealthy enough to do things like this, I think, what do I want to put my money towards? What communities were really lacking that I wish they had more money and more accessibility that I could then do when I'm older? It's like, or when I'm richer or whatever you want to say. Like That's something I think about too. And that's just me though. It's not objectively right. It's not what everyone needs to do. I don't care if you just make money and you never give it to charity. Like I'm not that person. I don't care what you do with your money. But you can see that already I'm looking at these two men in this Hollywood bubble and I like the way they use their interactions together to promote happiness and joy and connectivity. Like I really like that about them. Now, are there criticisms I could have for them? Sure. Do I love that Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively got married on a plantation? Super weird, bro. But some people think it's fine. I just think it's sort of like bad energy. Like I'm very superstitious sort of, but not like I don't believe in magic or gods or aliens or anything. Like if they're true, it's true. Great. But I don't don't actually believe in it I just kind of like I'm open to it but I'm a little superstitious in the sense that I'm like ooh, having a wedding on a plantation feels like bad energy but it's not unethical I just feel like it's bad energy but some people feel like it's super immoral like they had to apologize and people were like attacking them for it I can't think like that, right? Because land is a living, breathing thing and land should be transformed. So outside of our traumas, outside of our bubbles and outside of our history, these things exist. And that's where I want to push people to, to really focus on. Things matter outside of our beliefs. So the earth in which those plantations took place and slaves were beaten and bruised and raped and tortured that earth is a living entity outside of that history. That earth has a memory in of itself. Like I believe like dirt and earth and plants and living things hold their own humanity or their own plant and plant and I don't know how to say it like humanity, but like, you know, their whole their own consciousness, if you will, which sounds crazy, but it's very like, you know, every rock and tree and creature has a life, has a spirit, has a name. I want people to understand that my brain is willing to live and let live and forgive the world for its bloodshed because I feel like it's a part of your story and it is what happened, but I'm kind of ready to stop. But I don't think the world is ready and which is why world peace will not happen because it's not, it doesn't work that way. All you need is one fucking real narcissist in your pool and you're fucked. All you need is one fucking person who decides to like break consent and rape someone and you, you're fucked. Like you just need one person who will murder somebody and the whole thing is gone. And because I believe in free will, I think that these things will happen. You know, a real utopia in movies that always gets portrayed is only one that has severe regulation, which I do believe is possible. So I do believe you can have a functionally like Brave New World, Huxley, organized utopia through heavy regulation. I think that's pretty clear. I do believe freedom means chaos, which is why I'm pro-freedom, because I I respect and honor my one life on earth enough to want the absolute most freedom, even if the consequence is chaos versus giving up my freedom to have security. I don't need it from the world. Like, I mean, I'd like it. I'd like the world to work together. But the thing is, is like, so for Britney's brain, if I advocate for utopia, which is heavy regulation, then and then with that one, let's say there's someone in the community, even one person who wants to just spend their one life doing something different and they can't in order to maintain this peace, even if it's something like really simple, like maybe creating an art piece that's questionable. It's like, OK, well, now what does that one person's life not is that not valuable enough for me to like forego the rules or do they have the right to kill themselves at least so they don't have to exist in this world? So you guys know I like my existing. I said it before. Existence is everything outside the self. And for me, I'm exhausted by existence. Everyone's desire to tell me how to dress and who to be and how to talk is just a consistent reminder that like the world wants you to be a particular way and you must perform accordingly. And that's fair and fine in a society and in a culture. We live in a society. That's fair. 
I'm just trying to say that there's layers of nuance here that make it so it's not truly fair. It's fair, but it's not really fair, but it's fair. You get what I'm saying? Some people feel like I go after like Hassan or D'Angelo Wallace and all these things and I should be softer and nicer to them. But the thing is, is like I defend the fuck out of those motherfuckers to conservatives. And that's what I'm trying to say is like I can't go after anyone without everyone thinking I'm against everyone on that side. So I can't criticize anyone without everyone going, oh, like you're only doing that because you're this person and this person because that's how two bubbles work. I have the same exact amount of criticism for most people in the world it, which is like, what are your values and are you consistent? I judge Hassan on his own values. I don't judge Hassan on my values. Like, why would I do that? Hassan doesn't have my values. Hassan has his values. And by Hassan's own mouth, doesn't follow through with his own values. You know what I'm saying? You, so that's that's what I'm trying to explain to people. Like, if you can learn to judge people off their own values, you'll notice that people are easily, you can criticize people a lot. Girl, why is it the conservatives always say the left always preaches tolerance, but they're never tolerant. And then the left goes, oh, like conservatives are tolerant and conservatives go, I'm the most tolerant. And I'm like, you guys are so exhausting. Neither of you are tolerant and and or you're only tolerant in a way that makes sense for you and your values. Like I don't. Here's the problem with two bubbles is they have a tendency to be unable to acknowledge that they have personal values, that their personal values are not objective. And so. Because they don't want to say that out loud, they're always going to feel justified and then grouping and lumping people together and putting a stamp of disapproval on them as a black and white. As an example, my mother, like I want to adopt, if I don't have a partner, because you had this rate, probably not going to happen. If I don't have a partner by like 35, 36 and my house is purchased and the only debt I have is my house and I'm making 150K a year, which is my goal. I'm not near that yet, but that's my goal. Um, then I'm going to adopt a child. And I've been thinking about like, what are the moral and ethical consequences of doing this? I've asked the priest, I've asked my friends, I've asked people, I've asked the internet. And overall, there seems to be a little bit of from the conservatives, well, kids should be raised with moms and dads. Yes, yes, yes. But these kids are in foster care already. They're already in the system. They don't have moms and dads. Like they're, they're orphans. Like, you know what I mean? Like they don't have moms and dads. Um, oh, that's something my money would go to, by the way. If I became a bazillionaire, I would put my money to, uh, to like funding families and connecting families with their kids that they've had to give up because of financial instability in the state I live in there is a child up for adoption right now whose family has requested um connecting connection with that child they said look we can't financially take care of our kid for that kid to get you know any kind of medical um uh, help they had to be given up to the state so the state would pay for it but those parents would love access to their child still so that's how I'd spend my money if I became a billionaire that's how I would do it. I would go around all over the world and try to find the families who gave up their kids because of financial struggles instead of actually needing to give up a kid for a different reason. Because I, I feel like, okay, if money's the problem, like we will figure this out, right? Like I could never imagine being taken, like my child, like I would just, that would be so hard for me. I'm not even a mom yet, but like whew, I'm a mom, you know, that would just be really hard. So that's how I'd use my money. Um, wait, j -j -j -scourge, scourge. okay, so some people were, you know, giving me some advice. So the religious people said, well, Brittany, you know, it's better for the, the kids to be raised with mom and dads. And I said, fair, I, I understand that idea. Obviously, I'm LGBT. So if I marry a woman, um, I have like eight brothers and a dad. Is that good enough? But the thing is, because they're conservatives, they wouldn't want to hang out with me and my wife and our kids because it violates their religion. So the irony is that in in order for those kids that are born into lesbian homes to have father figures, the fathers and the brothers would have to want to engage with that family, but they can't because of their religion. <sighs> are you exhausted yet? <laughs> I'm exhausted. And I understand because that's your belief and that's how you feel. Same with my trans friends. They're like, oh, I won't, I won't let my kids meet my conservative parents or like, I don't want like my conservative parents to be around my, my life because they don't, they dead name me or they're, they're really inconsiderate of my transness. That's reasonable. I understand this. I, I totally am here for it. If you don't want to see your family because they're dead naming you for sure, for sure. And at the same time, I'm just sitting here and wondering like, when is it going to stop? Probably never. So my theory right now is that it won't stop. That 
people will give birth to babies and babies are twos and those babies can choose to be ones or threes and fours and fives or twos and they're going to make their own decisions and we're all going to come to our own you know our own conclusions at our own times why is there like a thousand different like teen dramas on Netflix and everything and why is it every year the same stories because humans are experiencing the same stories every year we really are just like tropes I don't think we're NPCs I do think that we have access to free will I do think we can we can make choices but I think in order to make choices that have the most information you would first have to admit you don't have all that information and that is really difficult in a two bubble so like a two bubble has good and bad like I said you know I think about um how a lot of people think that fives are apolitical like we're apathetic we don't get involved it's not quite like that I know a lot of um I know a lot of fives who are extremely passionate about the political like world totally I vote I just re-registered to vote in my state so excited let's go election time and I'm really excited about that but I don't canvas anymore I don't go protest I don't clean up streets the same way I used to I don't go out and like advocate for people the same way or register people to vote I used to do all of those things and I just don't do it anymore and a big part of it is because I feel like my time is better served in other areas and that is the method that's been used so up until this point, we've really allowed the twos to dictate how we're going to problem solve. And as a person who identifies as a five, I believe that I offer a different solution for the world's troubles, focusing on a small little pocket of the internet that I exist in because I don't think I'm Superman anymore and I don't think I can save the world. I'm not the avatar. I'm just a person. So what I'm going to try to do is focus on my smaller communities and help the people that I can and the way that fulfills me as a person and hopefully fulfills you as a viewer and a, and a consumer. And then we'll have this symbiotic relationship where we learn from one another. Like my calls always teach me things about the world because it's my access to different bubbles. Remember that my job gives me access to thousands of different bubbles a year. So I'm learning from so many of my calls are international people. They're non-binary. They're black, white, like different. Everybody's just so unique and different. I am I am just like so honored that they've chosen to talk to me, right? So again, I want to encourage you to not think of the twos as bad or the ones is even bad, even though ones are useless. Don't think of people as good or bad quite like that, but think of it as what made us come to this point where these are the solutions we've created. Why does Russia feel threatened by Ukraine? Why does Ukraine feel a need to appeal to the West? Why does the West feel a need to use Ukraine? It's like all of these things are layered in dirty politics and corruption, but also what it means to be a person. And so people are afraid and there's like a lot of, I just don't trust anything anyone's saying, but all I do know because I've seen all the videos is that people are dying and people are being killed and starved and Russian people are being, you know, cut off from financial um, access, which means they'll, they'll get hurt because they're poor. Ukrainians are dying in the streets because Russian tanks are, you know, driving over them. Like people are hurting each other and I'm not even convinced you even know why. I am not convinced anyone even knows why. And if you bring it back to drama that happened 50 years ago, that's what I'm saying. At what point are we going to let history be history? And at what point are we just going to move on with, you know what I'm saying? It's like trauma. Like if I went to a therapist, if America went to a therapist, would the therapist not say to stop living in the past? Would they, would, would they not tell their client, you need to stop living in the past and forgive yourself and forgive people and move on? But we don't do that as nations. We don't. We bring up old, bitter history and then we use it to move politics forward. It is what it is, right? So anyways, everyone has a reason for doing what they do. Figuring out that reason is much harder than you think, but it's also much simpler. You could just ask. And then you could have a real discourse and a real conversation about it, like the Muslim guy with destiny who very calmly and openly said, yes, of course, we're going to kill gay people. You know, we're not going to he goes, we're not going to, you know, you know, herd you all into the street and shoot you. It's only if we catch you. Thanks, buddy. I love a gay loophole. I love gay loopholes. <laughs> anyways I hope this made sense please leave your questions down in the sections below and remember that listen I I think humans are great I love y'all you make me feel uh in conflict sometimes like conflicted but a lot of the time I'm, I'm really happy with the way the world has gone it could be better but I mean can't we all I could definitely work out more I could definitely do a lot to be better it will happen when it happens we will do our best and until then Fingers crossed. My thoughts are with everyone struggling right now during the Ukraine-Russia debacle. 
And I just hope this ends as quickly as it started. All right. Talk to you guys soon. Bye. I take a bullet for my country, sir. You don't even take a needle for your neighbors. Fuck. If you've ever tried to put your finger up a straight guy's ass during sex, you'll know that they actually understand ongoing consent, withdrawal of consent, and sexual boundaries very well. They act confused when it's our body. Is it me? Am I the drama? I don't think I'm the drama. Maybe I am. Am I the villain? I don't think I'm the villain. Stuck in my head, in real life I'm in bed. My belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine. Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, da, 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 da.